As a landscape and garden designer myself, I always love creative solutions to uh, backyard landscapes. And Summer, you had an idea when you uh, built or bought this home uh, that you kind of wanted to execute. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what, what your thought was? Yeah, sure. Well, we had um, a bigger yard than what we were used to previously, and we really wanted to make it more of an open concept to let people, guests, family, um, our future kids come in, walk through, play around, and like have a lot of space. Mm -hmm. um, but we also wanted it to match the house, so to have a modern feel to uh -huh. it. Um, not overly modern, but comfortable and playful and fun and places where we could cook hang out and entertain guests and just have a lot of space. Sure. So you uh, sought out a designer uh, yeah. and and had some help with this. Tell me a little bit about that process. Yeah, so um, Matt and I actually worked together on our last house. Mm -hmm. We did something smaller in our backyard there. So I already knew I wanted to work with him again for this. We talked a little bit about some ideas and he really helped me elaborate on the idea, the original ideas I had. Uh -huh. um, he gave me this giant book of papers to pick from. Uh -huh. And the first time we talked about it, we already had the same pavers in mind. So I was like, all right, we're already on the right track. And those pavers sort of led you to kind of a unique theme back here. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so he had this great idea of um, a chessboard piece. Uh -huh. um, we didn't want it to be just a square, typical chessboard, and so we kind of expanded on that idea. Took and, some artistic license with it. Yeah, yeah. and um, added some different areas, like with their pergola, and making sure there would be a space for a big grill. Mm -hmm. um, and then he really just went over the top with the different plants and everything that kind of matched the chessboard feeling and theme. Sounds perfect and it looks beautiful. And we love it. So Matt, this is really a unique concept. Tell me a little bit about your design process and, and working with this particular homeowner. We had worked with Summer before mm -hmm. on a project in East Nashville and then she kind of called me out of the blue and said we have a new place. Right. And wanting something a little more modern. Uh huh. So I brought a catalog um, and we looked through the paver designs. Right. And we both kind of went on the same, found the same design in the book uh -huh. that we liked and it was kind of a checkerboard pattern. So then that got my wheel spinning. I was like, well, why don't we do a chess themed landscape? Sure. We can do some plants that represent the pieces on the board. And ultimately we decided on the, this is Teco block. This is right. the industrial series pavers. As you can see, we've got three colors. We've got a black, We've got a medium gray and a light gray. Uh -huh. So kind of the checkerboard pattern right. put together. That represents the board itself. It represents the board itself, which is usually in, in a sort of artistic squares. Yes. way. Yeah. Took a little, little artistic creativity to kind right. of meander. We needed to get pathways to the, the pergola area and, and a sidewalk and the, the right. sidewalk out. Right, yeah. and as Summer mentioned, a place for the grill, spaces to entertain. Exactly. You know, all of those kinds of things. So then from that point, uh, obviously you took um, a plant palette yes. and then recreated the chess pieces with that. Yes, more creative freedom. As you know, on the chess board there are 16 ponds. Mm -hmm. um, we used the green velvet boxwoods uh, to represent the ponds. Uh -huh. There are rooks, knights, and bishops. Uh -huh. uh, the bishops are the taller, slender pieces on the board. We use the emerald green arbor vita to right. represent the bishops. Uh, the knights, we used Annabelle hydrangea uh -huh. to represent those. And then the rooks, HM Eddie U. Okay, so those are a tall, slender, tall, slender, upright evergreen U. shrub. Yeah. Yes. And then of course we have kings and queens on the board, the queens being the tallest piece on the chessboard. We chose moon glow sweet bay magnolia, mm -hmm. which has the beautiful uh, white flowers. And then the kings are represented by the Autumn Brilliance Service Berry. Right, so those will have, several of these things will have multiple seasons of interest also. Correct, the, the Autumn Brilliant Service Berry will turn a fire red in the fall. Right, little white blooms in the spring. White blooms in the um, spring, and, and then berries and in the spring too. Berries yeah. and then fall color, and, and pretty bark as it ages, you know, kind of silvery exactly. gray bark in the wintertime even after it loses its leaves. And the Moon Glow Magnolia is kind of a semi-evergreen uh, sweet bay, right? Exactly, so it, it doesn't keep... lose all its leaves in right. the winter, it, leave, it loses some. Mm -hmm. um, 
mainly chose it for its uh, structural form, like right. the multi-trunk. It's just a, such a beautiful specimen. Well, and it's got those great flowers on it right now and fragrant. Fragrant. So as, they, yes. as they mature and get a little bigger and they're really blooming a lot, uh, it will be incredible out here during you absolutely know, the you just walk by and you can late just smell May, the June, aroma it's just uh, it's a wonderful time period wonderful smell so in the arrangement of the plant is there is there anything having to do with the chess game in how they're arranged or did you take a little more artistic license a with little that? bit the, i didn't want to get too far into the board with right. pieces on the board but you can right. see some of the boxwoods are in a little bit represents one move forward right and basically we tried to keep two rooks used on one side of the board, two bishops, two knights on each side of the board. Right. And then just added a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then you screening. popped some color in in some places. Is that just for fun? That was Miss Summer's doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, she just added a little bit. Sure. A little bit here and there. Always nice to have a little color. bit of color. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And even your furniture is, is kind of a contemporary look and feel. Um, so that that matches even the the little side table over here sort of looks it's like very, a chess it piece. It looks like a chess piece. It you does. know, it, everything kind of matches and goes together. It's really, really nice. Yeah. So when you're working on a small urban lot like this one is, because we're just over maybe a quarter of an acre here, Correct. something like that. Um, and obviously the client, Summer, wanted to maximize uh, the amount of space they had back here. How do you work with a client to meet their needs but also do something that's aesthetically, you know, pleasing? Pleasing. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, so first of all, we um, came up with a design on paper uh -huh. um, and incorporated concrete. We had, we brought in a concrete company from Clarksville to pour the mm -hmm. sidewalk and the uh, the pad for the pergola. Sure. And then maximizing the space, um, just kind of drew out uh, the plan for this. Right. And so that leaving you... enough room for four garden beds to separate the hardscape from the house. Right. Enough room for you know a focal point here, a focal point here. Right. And and some structural shrubs and fillers. Another interesting little design element is this uh, black lava rock that you've used around the edges. It's not just mulch right up to the edge of the patio. Correct. Is, um, is that just an aesthetic thing or does it It is. Go um, with... Mostly just for, for aesthetics. I felt mm -hmm. um, just bringing mulch to the edge of the patio looked a little boring. So I wanted an, an extra texture, an extra layer of color. And I thought the black lava rock was a great choice because it matched the darkest color of the paver. Of the pavers. Awesome. And I know, um, obviously, Summer has taken a little creative license out here. Also, you mentioned that she planted some of the color. They've got some containers with little patio uh, cherry tomatoes. And, and just again about maximizing space and using a, the little vertical garden to have some herbs right. to cook with. And yeah, it's a great kind of idea. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting us uh, in, into your world of design. <laughs> and. Uh, and showing us around uh, a really unique little backyard. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, it was my pleasure. Thank you all for coming. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.